Hey, this is Sammy again. I'm going to cover everything that you need to know about fractions in this video. So here you go. Um, first of all, what's a fraction? A fraction, if you see, we have the top there, which is two, and we call this the numerator. And we have the bottom, which is three, and we call this the denominator. What fraction means, it means two divided by three. That's what it means, or two out of three. So how does that apply in real situations? So if we look at this here, it's divided into three segments. So if I color this right here, this part of the circle, now the ones that are not colored are two. So this is your numerator is two. Out of the denominator, the denominator, all of these, which are three, segments right here, so two thirds. So this is two over everything. So the denominator is always including everything here. And the numerator is the partitions that you're interested in right here. So this is two thirds, yeah. So um, then what we're gonna look at, we look at mixed numbers. We call this mixed number. If we wanna change this to a mix, uh, from, from a mixed number to a fraction, or improper fraction, what you do, you multiply five into three, you get 15, and then you add the, that top one 15, uh, top, top one to the 15. So you get five times three is 15, plus one is 16, you write 16, and you keep the bottom the same or the denominator the same. So this is 16 thirds. We call this improper fraction, so improper, fraction. Why do we call it improper fraction? So improper fraction, whenever the top or the numerator is greater than the denominator, so if the numerator is bigger than the, the, the denominator, we call it improper fractions. So therefore, if we have, let's say, five eighths, then we'll call this proper fraction. Because the top is less than the bottom or the numerator is less than the denominator. When that's the case, then it's proper fraction. Okay, now how about changing from impro improper fraction to a mixed number? When we wanna do that, we go seven divided by two. So how many times does two go into seven? It doesn't have to go into it evenly, but we know two goes into seven three times. However, we know three times two is six. So we know there's a one as a remainder and that one will go over this number right here, which is two. So three and one halves is the same as seven halves. This is improper fraction, this is a mixed number. Here, this is a mixed number, we change it to improper fraction. Now we go to the next thing about fractions. Whenever we do in fractions, and I cannot emphasize this enough, reduce fractions, always reduce fractions before you proceed to the next step. How do we reduce fractions? When we wanna reduce fractions, we look at both numbers and see if there's a number that we could see that goes into them. That, that's when your multiplication and division table comes to mind. You know, So what goes into eight and two evenly, both of them? And I see right away here, two goes into eight four times and two goes into 18 nine times. So what we do, we cross the eight, we make it four, we cross the eight, make it nine. nine we, cross, we cross the 18, make it nine, because basically we're dividing this eight by two, we're getting four and we divide the 18 by the same thing by two also, and we get nine, and that's how we reduce fractions. So that's four over nine. So the next thing we're gonna do is multiply fractions and divide them. So when we multiply in fractions, we always look to reduce, okay? You could always reduce within, each fraction, but here we cannot, three and five, we cannot reduce by anything. 10 and nine, we could not reduce by anything. Then you look diagonally with the 10 and five and the three and nine, and if you could reduce, do so. So here, definitely I could see five goes into itself once and it goes into five twice. So five goes into five, five goes into five once and five goes into 10 twice. Now, how about here? I could see that three goes into itself once and three goes into nine, three times. And now we cannot reduce any further. So we just multiply tops together. One times two, we get two. 
and one times three, we get three. Next thing, when we're dividing, so when we're dividing, we cannot divide till we do this. We go seven over 27. We change the division to multiplication and we flip this. So if this is 14 over nine, we make it nine over 14. Um, another word to say this is to reciprocate, the reciprocal of this. This is a big word, but just flip. I think it's good enough. Um, and now it becomes exactly like this. When you multiply, you look to reduce within nothing, nothing within, but diagonally. I could see nine goes into itself once and goes into 27 three times. And here diagonally, I could see seven goes into itself once and goes into 14 twice. Now I multiply tops together. One times one is one. Three times two is six. Now we come to the next question. This is division. However, when we have improper fractions, we have to change them. Or sorry, when we have mixed numbers, we have to change them to improper fractions to be able to divide them and, and multiply them. So here, again, three times two is six. Six plus one is seven. This is seven over two divided by two times three is six. Six plus one is seven. So this becomes seven over three. And therefore, when we're dividing, we always change the multiplication and reciprocate, if you like big words, or just flip. That's good enough. So now seven goes into itself once, goes into itself once. We divide both of these by seven. So we got one, one. Now you cannot reduce any further. You multiply tops. You get three times one, which is three, and two times one is two. So this is three halves. You could leave this as 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 it is, or if you want to change it to improper fraction, uh, or change it to a mixed number, you go three divided by two. Two goes into three, not evenly, but it goes into three once, and then one times two is two. You have one as a remainder, so it's two, one and one half, and that's the answer for that. So here's the next thing is adding and subtracting fractions. So when you're adding and subtracting fractions, you follow the same rules. The rules are is to do common denominator if, or the lowest common denominator. But here, since the denominators are the same, you just write a long line, you write the six right here, and then you put the one plus two right on top of them. And then here you add the top and you get three over six. When you reduce this, you get three goes into itself once and it goes into six twice, so your final answer is one half. Now, how about this one? This one here, there's no um, common denominator, so you have to look for the lowest common denominator. How do we do lowest common denominator? You go to the biggest number or the biggest denominator right here, which is the three, and uh, you see if the two goes into three evenly. No, it doesn't, so you go to the next multiple of three, which is six. Does two go into six? Yeah, two goes into six, so therefore six is my lowest common denominator. So the way I do it, I go six divided by three, I get two, I multiply that two into the top two, you get four. And then I have my plus sign and I go six divided by two is three. I multiply the three into the top here, which is one, three times one gives me three. Or if you're more comfortable doing this, you know, to make this the common denominator, six you multiply this by two, you do the same thing to the top. And to make this six, you multiply it by three, you do the same thing to the top and that will still give you this. Here we have seven over six and seven over six. If you want to change it to improper fraction it's a, or, or to change it to mixed number from improper fraction, you go seven divided by six, six goes into seven once. And then you have one as a remainder and that will be one and one six if you want to change it to that. But this is fine enough. Now, as I said, subtracting is the same as addition. So if you don't have a common denominator, you have to make a common denominator. You look at the biggest number, does six go into eight? No, it doesn't. Go next to the next multiple of eight, which is 16. Does six go into 16? No, it doesn't. Let's go to the next multiple of eight. After 16 plus eight is 24. So 24, does six go into 24? Yeah. So now 24 is your lowest common denominator. So now you go 24 divided by eight, which gives you three. You multiply that three to the top three there and you get nine. Minus 24 divided by six is four. You multiply the four into the one, you get four, and this will give you five over 24. So now we're adding mixed numbers. Do we need to change them to improper fractions? No, you don't. If you're more comfortable doing that, go ahead, but I, I don't. So what I do here, 
I add the five and the two, I get seven. I take the two thirds and one quarter on the side and I add the two thirds and one quarter the same way that I do common denominator here. So my common denominator, I'm gonna be a little bit quicker in this. 12, 12 divided by three is four, four times two is eight. And then 12 divided by four is three, three times one is three. And I get, this will give me 11 over 12. So therefore the answer is seven and 11, 12. Yeah. So we'll go do what two more questions and then this is it this is all you need to know for fractions if you understand how to do this basically fractions are all covered for you so here is another one we subtracting so we do the same thing nine minus five is four and I think I take the one half minus one third on the side. I do common denominator, which is six. Six divided by two is three. Three times one is three. And then minus sign, six divided by three is two. Two times one is two. So that's there equals one over six. So my answer here is four and one sixth. Of course, if you're more comfortable doing common denominator this way, you multiply this by three, multiply this by three, multiply this by two and you multiply this by two, you still get three minus two, which gives you one six, and that's the answer. Now, here's one more, and this will be my last question that I'm gonna cover. This is a little bit tricky, so the same thing, we're adding uh, mixed numbers, so we go three plus two is five. I take the three quarters plus the one half to the side. My common denominator here is four, and I'm gonna get three, multiply this by two, multiply this by two if you like that, plus two, which is, five quarters. Now this is improper fraction. What you need to do before you bring this in here, you definitely, because it's improper fraction, you have to change it into a mixed number. And this will give me one and one quarters because five divided by four gives me one. And we know one times four is four. So one is a remainder. So it's one and one quarter. So what you do, you take this five here and add one and one quarters to it. You just add the one to the five and you get six. And so it's six and one quarter, and this is it. So there you go. I mean, if you could follow this and follow it, fractions are done. You got all the tools that you need to be solving fractions. As always, thanks again for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button, share with family and friends, subscribe to my channel. Till next time, bye-bye.